What's going on guys and welcome to another video. Now today we're talking about the new Google Pixel 6. So if you recently picked up this device, then congratulations on your new purchase. And if you're wondering what are the first things you need to do to get your phone set up, or you're wondering what you should enable or disable in the settings, today is the video for you because I'm gonna show you 10 first things you need to do on your new Google Pixel device. And we're gonna start off with the fingerprint scanner. Now, when you set up the device for the first time, you probably would have set up your initial fingerprint, but what we're gonna do is actually improve on it a little bit because when it comes to biometrics, all we have on this phone is the fingerprint scanner. We don't actually have face unlock. I'm a little bit disappointed about that. Hopefully they'll add it in an update in the future. But for now, we wanna make sure that our fingerprint scanner is working as best as possible. So what we're gonna do is unlock our phone, go to settings and you're going to scroll down to security and down here you'll see fingerprint unlock and you can see i already have five fingerprints added and the reason for that is i don't always want to use my thumb to unlock my phone so if my phone is just laying down on my table i just want to be able to use my index finger on either hand without having to pick up my phone and use my one fingerprint so just be sure to add whatever fingers that you want to here but another trick you should do is actually add your main finger twice so these two first profiles are actually of my main finger so i use my right thumb to unlock my phone and the reason for that is that your phone will have more data of your thumb so anytime that you're unlocking your phone from the lock screen depending on what the way you're holding your phone or how you put your thumb on there the fingerprint scanner will have two profiles to look at so it should more often than not recognize your finger no matter what position it's in and while we're on the topic of fingerprint scanners tip number two also has to do with the fingerprint scanner so what we're actually going to do is make it more reliable and a little bit quicker so we're going to go to settings go to display and then down at the bottom here you'll see it says increased touch sensitivity now what this is going to do is actually it's actually made for people who use uh, screen protectors on their phone you can see it says improves touch while using screen protectors but this is actually also going to improve the sensitivity of the fingerprint scanner so even though i don't have a screen protector on here i'm going to turn this on because it's going to make the fingerprint scanner a little bit more sensitive and read my finger a little bit quicker so this is something that you should enable if you're finding that your fingerprint scanner in here isn't the best and google put an optical one in here so it's not as good as the ultrasonic ones that you might find on like the s21 ultra so this is definitely a feature you should enable just to improve that fingerprint scanner a little bit all right guys so next thing we're going to do is add a battery percentage sign up here because you can see that it just shows us the icon of the battery but not actually how much percentage is left some people don't like that, me included. I wanna know exactly how much percentage I have. So to do that, we're just gonna go into our settings, go to battery, and if you scroll down, it says battery percentage. So all we're gonna do is toggle that, and you can see the percentage popped up right up here. So we have 77%. I really like this feature because I wanna just be able to quickly glimpse up here, see how much battery I have, and move on with my day. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is enable quick tap. Now, this is a really cool feature that allows you to just quickly tap on your phone and allow it to take a certain action. So I'll show you what I mean by that. If we go to settings, scroll down to systems, and then tap on gestures, in here at the top, you'll see quick tap. So if we tap into here, you see it says use quick tap. So if we enable that, you can see there's a few options that we can select. So if we double tap on the phone, it can take a screenshot, access your Google Assistant, play or pause media, see recent apps, show notifications, or even open a specific app. Now the way this works is all you need to do is double tap on the back of your phone and it will take a screenshot. So if I go back to my homepage, double tap here, you can see it took a screenshot. So a really cool feature, but what I personally like to do is actually map it to a certain app. So if we go open app and then tap on this cog wheel, It'll give you a list of all your apps, so just go in here and pick whichever one you want. But I personally like to set it to Maps, so it'll open up my Google Maps. So if I go back here, double tap again, you can see it'll open up my Maps. So a really cool feature and I definitely suggest you guys enable it. Alright guys, so the next thing we're going to do is customize the lock screen a little bit. So we're just going to add a few more features onto here. So if we go into our settings, scroll down to Display and then go to lock screen. In here, there'll be a few more options that I like to enable. So show wallet will pretty much just allow you to pay with your Google wallet directly from your lock screen. So I like to enable that. And then if we scroll down a little bit more, you see it says always show time and info. So what this is, is the always on display. So if we lock our phone right now, you can see there's no always on display. We have to double tap to get to the lock screen and then unlock our phone. If we enable this, what you're gonna see is when we lock our phone, 
it brings on that always on display. And another really nice thing about it is we get the fingerprint scanner directly from the always on display. So we don't actually need to go into our lock screen to unlock our phone. We can do it directly from the always on display. So there you go, we wanna enable that. And the last thing in here that we wanna do is add text on lock screen. So if we tap into here, it'll give us this little pop-up and you can write whatever you want. And this will actually show up on the lock screen of your phone. So if you ever lose your phone, you can leave a phone number or an email on here or any other contact information so that the person who finds it hopefully is feeling nice enough is able to reach out to you so you can write something like please return to and then maybe put alex at email so just put your email and we hit save if we go back to our lock screen down here you can see it says please return to alex at email.com so if a person ever finds your phone and they want to return it to you they'll have a way to contact you since obviously they can't get into your phone because they don't know your password so they won't be able to call you just leave them some contact information on here and they'll be able to reach out to you all right guys so the next thing we're gonna do is play around with the quick settings so if we scroll down you can see we have all of these toggles here now this is a little bit different on android 12 because these icons are a little bit bigger and you don't have access to that many of them so if i show you my old samsung phone next to this one you can see that here we only have an option for four toggles but here we had eight uh six and then if we scroll down again there's only eight options here but if we scroll down again from here on the old android 11 we had a total of 12 so what you want to do is make sure that you have all your favorite toggles available to you as fast as possible so you don't have to kind of like scroll over and find which ones you want. So I put my top four favorite ones first and then down here I put my top eight favorite ones. Now if you want to customize this all you need to do is hit on this pencil icon and you'll see all of the available options here and what you can do is just hold on it and drag it around and put it wherever you want. So be sure you organize this because on Android 12 we don't actually have an option to resize these. This is just how it comes by default. You can't change this. All you can do is drag these around. So definitely something you want to set up so that everything that you're looking for is as quickly as possible accessible to you like that. All right. So another thing people usually like to change is when you hold the power button by default, what's going to happen if my camera can focus hello is it will actually bring up the google assistant a lot of people don't like that what they want to do is power off their phone but google assistant is coming up asking us questions so if you want to change that what you want to do is go into your settings scroll down to system and then go to gestures and then in here at the bottom you'll see press and hold power button so if we tap on that here you see hold for assistant is enabled so every time we hold that power button it'll bring up google assistant so if we toggle that off you see it says press and hold for the power menu so if we tap that now you can see we have the option to lock down restart power off or emergency so if that's what you want be sure to enable that but if you want to keep google accessible you can enable that and if you want to know how you can actually turn off your phone all you need to do is scroll down scroll down again and in here you'll see this power icon you tap on that and you can power off your phone this way so i've personally gotten used to having my google assistant pop up i kind of like that now and if i ever want to power off my phone which isn't that often i can just go in here and do it this way oops did not mean to do that all right i'll see you in a minute all right guys and we are back and the next thing we're gonna do is actually help you improve your sleep by setting up a do not disturb schedule so believe it or not any notifications you get at night even if it's a soft vibrate it can actually pull you out of a deeper state of sleep into a lighter state of sleep and kind of mess with your sleep so what i always do on all of my phones and i highly suggest you do is enable do not disturb which will make sure that your phone does not bother you at all in between certain hours like when you're sleeping so to do that we're gonna go into our settings scroll down to sound and vibration and here you'll see it says do not disturb so if we tap on that you can see you can just enable it right now so if you don't want to be bothered maybe you're doing homework or studying or you're working you can just quickly turn that on i also have it from my quick toggles right here you see it says do not disturb but what you can do is actually set a schedule so let's turn this off and you can see down here it says schedule so if you tap into here you see you can have it during on when you're sleeping events or even when you're gaming so let's just set it up for when we're sleeping we're going to tap on that and we're going to hit on this cog wheel and you see there's a schedule already set up in here for every single day of the week it starts at 8 that's 10 o'clock at night and ends at 7 a.m in the morning so this is actually pretty good for me i like to leave this default but let's say maybe you stay up until 12 and you only wake up at 9 you don't want to be bothered you know until 9 a.m so you can go into here and just change that to uh, let's say midnight oops uh, go back to the hour change that to midnight 
okay and then end time we can set that for 9 a.m in the morning so there you go you can kind of just enable it like that and now nobody is going to bother you at night while you're sleeping but one really important thing that you should always do with a do not disturb schedule is actually set up exceptions so let's say you know an emergency happens at night and someone needs to get a hold of you you don't want to just sleep through that so you can see here it says what can interrupt do not disturb you can add people apps or alarm so if you want to add people you can just tap in here there's certain conversations calls or messages that you can enable so just go in here and add whatever contacts you want uh, to be able to call you and get through that do not disturb schedule now one thing that you should also make sure this is enabled by default but just be sure this is enabled is allow repeat callers so instead of adding any contacts in here or anything like that because you don't know who might be calling you if this person calls you more than once within 15 minutes it will actually bypass that do not disturb schedule and try to wake you up you'll actually hear the ringing of your phone definitely just be sure to go through here and set up that do not disturb schedule just to be able to sleep better i've definitely noticed that my sleep has gotten a little bit better because i'm not getting instagram or youtube notifications overnight and it just doesn't bother me while i'm sleeping all right guys so the next thing we're going to do is mess around with the grid a little bit and what the grid is is it pretty much determines how many icons are allowed on your screen vertically and horizontally and just determines how much space there is for anything on your screen so to set that up what we're going to do is tap on our and hold on our home screen and then we're going to go to wallpaper and style and if you scroll down to the bottom you see it says app grid if we tap into here you see i have mine selected to five by five and this is what my home screen looks like you can see there's five icons this way and you can do five the other way as well so if i show you if you tap on maybe three by three what it's going to do is make those icons a lot bigger and less things are going to fit on your screen so depending on maybe your site or how you like this to look just go ahead and select whichever one you like i personally prefer five by five i think that looks really good for me and just hit apply and then it'll just change around your icons to make sure that everything looks the way you need and another thing we want to do on the home screen is actually if we tap on here and then this time go to home settings in here you see it says at a glance so this is set to off you want to be sure that this is set to on so you can see it says weather and information about upcoming events will be shown on your home screen and the lock screen so this is really useful if you have like a reminder or a calendar event it will actually show you on your phone so if we actually set one up right now Remind me to take out the trash in five minutes. So you can see it created this reminder and then we should, there you go. It says right there at a glance is showing that in five minutes we have a reminder. It says take out the trash. All right guys, so the last feature we're gonna enable is a really useful one if you're let's say at home or in a safe and secure location. You don't want to have to keep unlocking your phone every time you're trying to get into there and typing in your password or putting your, your, in your fingerprint. You just want your phone to unlock because you're at home, there's nothing to hide. So this is a feature called Smart Lock and to enable it, what we're going to do is go into our settings. In here we can just search for Smart and it should come up. Uh, okay, let's do Smart Lock. There you see it says Smart Lock. We're just going to tap into here. We're going to go again into Smart Lock, put in our password. And you can see we get three options. There's on-body detection, trusted places, and trusted devices. Now I did a whole entire video on how to set this up. I'll link that video in the description below, so be sure to check it out. But pretty much what you wanna do is enable a few of these features. I personally go for trusted places and trusted devices. Trusted places will pretty much unlock your phone anytime you're in the location that you specified. It works by like a vicinity thing. So if you're close enough to your home address, your phone will just unlock without you having to put in your fingerprint or typing out your PIN password. Trusted devices will work every time your phone connects to maybe a smartwatch or a pair of Bluetooth headphones. So pretty much anytime you have an active Bluetooth connection to one of your trusted devices, your phone will act the same way and just unlock. So let's just set up a trusted place as an example. We're going to go into here and then we're going to go to add trusted places. It'll give you a GPS location of where you're located. But if you, but if you want to get more specific, you can tap on here and type in your home address. Once you do that, all you need to do is tap add this location. So I already have my home address into here. So all I'm going to do is tap on it and say turn on this location. Now my phone does not need my fingerprint or pin or anything to unlock. It should just be unlocked because my phone is recognizing where I'm located and it is in a trusted place. And there you go. You can already see that the unlock icon is showing, which means my phone is open. All I need to do is swipe up. So this is a really useful feature if you don't want to have to put in your pin. You know you're at home. There's nothing to hide. Your phone can stay open and you don't want to have to put in your pin or your fingerprint. You can quickly just get into your phone. So there you have it guys, that is 10 really cool first things that you need to do on your new Pixel device to get everything set up. 
Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe for future videos to come, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.